Yes, radiation diagnostic for tumor and non-tumor um, diseases uh, of um, salivary glands. We will talk about CT, MRI, and of course, touch a little bit on X-ray because it's a classic. I will not touch upon ultrasound because the previous uh, speakers uh, provided information more than enough. At St. Petersburg State Un a Medical University named after Pavlov, that's my university, we set up a multidisciplinary team of doctors. I am uh, an X-ray doctor um, and a um, radio doctor. I um, diagnose uh, and treat um, diseases uh, of um, salivary glands. Um, I get questions on um, the changes in the structure, um, how to assess the features, the distribution of neoplasma, and uh, what is the secondary lesion and its assessment. Once the treatment is delivered, then um, specialist doctors, they want to know the dynamics after uh, irradiation therapy and to assess the, uh, whether the surgery was really radical. What do we have in terms of methods in diagnostics uh, for salivary glands? Uh, um, radiation takes a lot, uh, classical x-ray, uh, radionuclide, ultrasound, uh, computer tomography of different types, including multispectral. And uh, today uh, we have um, a higher portion for MRI. This portion is growing. MRI investigations. X-ray, when it comes to salivary glands, we, you do, uh, we have classical uh, overview X-ray for and targeted uh, salivary gland X-ray for um, mouth cavity. In this spectrum, we use uh, orthopanctomogram as well. Retrograde contrast sialography. Contrast is delivered, um, but uh, we cannot identify parenchyma in salivary glands, but it allows to visualize uh, whether there is a, a delay uh, in um, or no evacuation of the contrast. And it's exactly confirmed by the pictures. Dynamic sialocentigraphy, we can uh, assess uh, the um, concentration for tasting there is this curve shows that there is no reaction uh, to uh, taste irritator and no concentration ability cialisonography gives a big advantage there is no radiation plus it's real time investigation it's optimal for surface structures and uh, for vascular condition assessment Unfortunately, it's a subjective method, and it's uh, difficult to get the second opinion in um, at, uh, at a different profession. For computer tomography, CT, uh, primarily for multi-spiral, it's a fast method, um, um, and uh, it's good for patients in grave condition. Uh, and at the same time, if needed, uh, other segments and areas in the body can be assessed. You can assess um, costal structures, bones. Uh, you can combine it uh, with angiography and provide a uh, different option for reformation. And you can puncture uh, with the uh, CT assistance. However, it's quite high in terms of irradiation. A separate uh, word uh, I will spend uh, on uh, CT cialography to assess um, with contrast uh, the, the flow. As I said already, we start using more frequent, frequent a highly technological method, uh, MRI. No radiation. It allows uh, to see several planes. However, 
there is a big disadvantage. It's a long investigation, and it's impossible to uh, do on patients with metal implants. For example, the uh, pacer, the metal pacer, uh, metal implants, pacemaker and uh, implants. Preparing to this presentation, I reviewed uh, domestic literature on uh, salivary diseases. And among all publications, uh, we identified the most frequent um, authors, uh, uh, um, salivarologist, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Afanasiv, and one of his recent uh, publications, he classified these lesions and diseases of salivary glands, uh, these um, inherited or de um, developments, uh, um, uh, stones, a uh, uh, separate disease, uh, and tumors. Authors uh, will uh, treat diseases um, frequency differently. Um, uh, saliva stones uh, and inflammations are the most frequent. The international classification uh, version 10 uh, treat um, stones uh, as a K11 class. Among the listed um, diseases, uh, some are actually symptoms or syndromes. Um, in English um, sources, um, one of the latest editions uh, also includes the same or similar uh, list of um, salivary gland diseases, same classifications. The only thing are uh, the separate um, modifications of salivary glands in case of systemic diseases. Uh, this uh, presentation is at Oncology Congress, hence I have um, decided uh, to uh, explain in more detail the cerebral gland tumors. Uh, these tumors uh, uh, make some 10% of all uh, head and neck tumors and up to 6% of all the human tumors. Uh, the uh, most of cellular gland tumors uh, are benign, up to 85%. As for localization, quite often are uh, there in parotid uh, glands, uh, and uh, the uh, frequency is in direct proportion to the size of the gland. The previous speaker mentioned that uh, parotid gland has most frequently benign tumors. Uh, the ratio of benign and malignant uh, in um, um, lower masseter. Um, Sorry, mandibular uh, uh, gland is uh, uh, higher. Well, international histology classification among the nine uh, tumors, the most frequent are pleomorphic adenomas. Among the nine, the most frequent ones are uh, mucoepidermoid carcinomas. According to the uh, data of our University, of course, everything depends on selection. But um, more frequent were pleomorphic adenomas. Um, uh, they are um, encountered in our selection up to five percent, uh, uh, fifty percent of cases, and uh, malignant uh, tumors are some um, fifteen percent of cases. One five. Um, now let me uh, present the clinical cases of pleomorphic adenomas, most, uh, that's most frequent benign, tumor of salivary glands up to 77% of um, uh, parotid gland uh, tumors, quite often in middle-aged uh, women, uh, uh, slow asymptomatic growth and local uh, relapses in nearly half the cases. Uh, as uh, I've mentioned, more we try to use MRI more frequently. How does it assist to diagnose pleomorphic adenomas? At MRI, we can uh, do both uh, coronal section, sagittal axial um, uh, section. Uh, we can do uh, fat tissue suppression, and a uh, subtraction program is also possible. This method is necessary when uh, we do the study after the biopsy. It happens as well. Also. Often, now it's a standard, or always, um, we uh, use um, a diffuse-weighted um, um, 
sequences uh, with um, making a diffuse charting. Clinical surveillance, patient female, 54 years old. Uh, she came to ENT doctor uh, and complained about um, the problem of swallowing. Uh, there was no swelling um, near in the parotid area, uh, but there was deformation of the side of the pharynx, side wall of the pharynx. So MRI was made. MRI detected, uh, helped to visualize rather a big neoplasm coming uh, from the um, larynx, uh, heterogeneous, maybe mainly hyperintensive um, um, signal with accumulation of contrast uh, when it was introduced intravenously. Control uh, surgery was conducted. Histology uh, diagnosed adenoma pleomorphic one at control MRI that we always try to do. Same as before the surgery. Um, so we've made MRI uh, seven months after the surgery. In the surgery area, there were no post-surgery modifications, no relapses, no recurrences. We do the follow-up of the patient. Adenolymphoma. Uh, that's the second most frequent benign tumor of salivary glands. It consists of epithelial uh, gland-like uh, structures. It's usually in the parotid gland. Typical for it is double-side localization, slow asymptomatic growth. It's more frequent uh, in middle-aged and elder men. And it's associated with smoking and um, irradiation. Clinical case, patient, uh, male, 70 um, years old, uh, multifocal neoplasms in both salivary glands uh, with multiple uh, dissections and vegetation inside the structures. Uh, partitions, multiple partitions. Surgery was conducted. Uh, Adenolymphoma was um, the diagnosis after histology. Now, malignant uh, neoplasms of salivary glands. Uh, we also uh, use the clinical recommendations of our Russian oncologists issued in the years 1819. Malignant neoplasms of salivary gland make up to 5% of all the malignant tumors and up to 5% of all head and neck tumors. Um, Mucoepidermoid carcinoma is the most frequent uh, primary uh, malignant tumor of salivary glands, makes up to 5% uh, of all the salivary gland uh, tumors, mainly in uh, women, in parotid uh, glands, uh, contains uh, cysts, uh, and uh, uh, pus is, and fistulas uh, are typical. That's a clinical observation number three case. A young patient, age 23, uh, uh, was diagnosed with a fistula. MRI was done before the surgery, and cyst-like neoplasm was found on the surface of parotid gland. Histology, unfortunately, diagnosed uh, mucopidermoid carcinoma. Adenocystis carcinoma, second frequent malignant tumor of salivary glands, and first most frequent of minor glands, mainly in women, children, very seldom. Classical symptoms of the patients. Case number four, patient female, aged 60, uh, when coming to our university. Earlier we did a CT, that was the first thing. Now more frequently we do MRI right away. So she had primary MRI, and inside the left parotid gland we found heterogeneous neoplasm. We even suspected necrosis. And there was accumulation of contrast. So we've did, uh, we've done MRI. 
and uh, uh, tumor contours um, couldn't be detected. There's a solid component um, uh, with non regular innovation into the adjacent structures um, near the parotid uh, gland. After the surgery, his histology diagnosis was adenokistis uh, uh, cystic uh, carcinoma. Separate chapter are lymphomas of um, salivary glands, the primary. Uh, lymphoma is a rare pathology, some 3% of all neoplasias of salivary glands. 70% uh, of lymphomas are in um, parotid. Uh, 20 uh, percent uh, under uh, uh, the mandible and uh, sublingual are much more rare. This is a diffuse B cell uh, lymphoma follicular and in vive uh, lymphoma. Case patient female aged 59 MRI was conducted um, imaging. Um, showed multifocal cyst-like um, neoplasms both in the gland and uh, in uh, the uh, pharynx with um, distinct um, um, borders. Immunohistochemia um, infiltrate um, has B cells uh, prevailing. Uh, that's typical for lymphoma of male type. One more case, a uh, male patient, age 20, one MRI with a diffuse weighted um, imaging. And uh, this determined the signs uh, of um, true uh, diffuse restriction, typical for lymphoid tissue. Immunic is the uh, chemistry uh, confirmed the nodular a Hodgkin lymphoma with uh, uh, lymphoid prevailing. For benign uh, cystic neoplasms, uh, typical are um, uh, the um, distinct borders, um, homogeneity of uh, structure, and it's all inside uh, the salivary gland. Uh, that's a male patient, uh, aged 50, with a cyst, uh, and cystic component uh, goes to the pharynx. Uh, for the non-tumor, uh, Neoplasms of um, um, salivary glands. We also do um, MRI at uh, Seldonites. Uh, the uh, gland gets bigger. There are multiple small cyst uh, like structures, uh, um, the signs of edema. This is a patient with signs of edema of the right uh, sublingual salivary gland. Uh, the volume is um, expanded um, and uh, uh, stenum is uh, expanded um, and there are concrements um, in it. Um, stone disease, uh, we use CT most frequently. CT provides better Imaging of contrast uh, uh, concrements. Uh, they may be of different size, small one, two millimeters, and bigger ones. In this case, uh, the patient had both MRI and uh, CT. CT detected, uh, these are the two images at the bottom. Uh, you see the contrast concrements uh, in uh, stenon of uh, the left parotid. Um, top is MRI. In the stenum, you can see uh, the uh, signal disappearing. That's typical for a big concrement. MRI can also detect different um, anomalies of um, cellular gland development uh, or growth. Uh, like, for example, additional lobes. Usually they're on the surface of um, masseter muscles, um, cysts, um, additional um, ducts. And uh, let me share some difficult cases for diagnosis, like um, MRI in uh, patients with AIDS. Such
patients in parotid glands have multiple subtotal or totally located cysts like uh, neoplasms. Uh, they may be uh, all over the salivary gland. At MRI, there's no accumulation if contrast is used. That's it with my presentation. Thanks a lot for your attention.